Yo, what's going on, Tang Clan? It is your boy King Tang X here, back with another video. Um, you guys already probably saw part one of this series. If not, I'm just going to either, nah, not just either. Basically, I'm going to put part one to this what if in the community tab. I'll leave it in the description below. And I'll try and do like one of those things you see on YouTube with that little thing at the top. It was showing a little slide, I guess. I I don't know what I'm saying, but it's whatever. On to the video, but before that, let's get into the intro. The new intro. In the whipping, I'm whipping the solari. Chin the tone when I'm facing like Pilates. While you front, you act like you somebody. Keep a trail in the veil, how I go by. I was stuck in the rut, I was nobody. I've been looking for something to go body. There's an art to the hustle, like yo, got it. Kick out a kid back and hit like a new shot. In the whipping, I'm whipping the solari. Chin the tone when I'm. My throat's going to hurt after this, but it's whatever. Y'all been waiting for like two days. Um, let's see. A mysterious new titan had appeared within Wild Rose. It was completely different from any of the titan with it having scales, spikes, and a tail? Most titans would tend to resemble humans, albeit in a more malformed way. It was also much larger than any other titan the people had ever seen. It even put the colossal titan to shame. For some reason it also had this weird ability allowing them to shoot this giant beam of energy from their mouth which was actually incredibly useful because of how it was able to wipe out all the rest of uh, the titans in the area. Wyman and Mikasa were the prime witnesses of this display of power. They were confused though. Why was some... Why wasn't Titan attacking other titans? Was this some abnormal titan? Was this even really a titan or something else entirely considering just how different it looked from the other titans they were used to they were used to seeing they didn't have any time to focus on these questions for long though because of the fact this goliath of a titan suddenly collapsed right after launching that attack smoke started to emit from the, from the titan and the silhouette uh, appeared to be coming out of the titan. Weird. Ayman and Mikasa were lost for words once they saw who it was coming out of this titan's body. But... Was it really him? As the smoke dissipated, they made their way down to the titan... Down to the titan's area in order to get a better look and confirm their suspicions. Sure enough, it was Aaron removing himself from the nape of the titan's body. Iron looked Aaron up and down before noticing that his leg regrew. That was honestly quite amazing. He didn't understand the whole reasoning behind it, but he was just glad Aaron was alive, although he was unconscious. Mikasa felt his heartbeat and pulse. Good. He was just knocked out for now. She could deal with that. Mikasa ended up embracing Aaron in a hug, which was rare for the girl as she wasn't one to show emotion like that, which made this moment extraordinary, honestly. <clears throat> You could say, well, she was human. <laughs> that wasn't the point though. What mattered 
What mattered here were the consequences of Aaron's actions. At the time though, while Aaron was unconscious, he was pretty much floating around in his mindscape. He was remembering all the events leading up to his, transform his transformation into this huge titan. His leg getting bitten off, getting eaten alive. All of that he was reflecting on at the time. Stretching out his arms to find a way out of this hellhole that was the titan's insides was meant to be a cry of desperation for Aaron. To have a giant arm and legs shooting out of him wasn't necessarily something Aaron was expecting, but he was really com he wasn't really complaining as it gave him a form of escape. He ripped through he ripped through that beast who tried to eat him, and he just remembered being full of rage, seeing all those other titans. But they were ants to him now. He smiled, unknowingly chanting about about killing everyone. He woke up the he woke up though to find himself surrounded by several soldiers with their weapons aimed at him. He looked around to see his surroundings and was understandably quite confused. What was the meaning of this? He looked over to the captain who was sweating bullets at this point. Are you a titan or human? The captain the captain asked. Aaron was left perplexed by this question. What did he mean by that question? Whether he was human or titan? What what kind of ridiculous question was that? I'm sorry, but I don't think I understand the question. Aaron tried to explain. D d d d don't play dumb with me. Th there were several witnesses back there who saw you come out of a titan, which therefore makes you a threat. Most of the interactions stayed pretty similar to in canon, to be honest. The main difference here was when Aaron tried to rescue Mikasa and Armin from the cannonballs being fired at them. Aaron was able to bite down on his thumb and trigger his transformation into his titan state although it wasn't the complete form. It was pretty much just a skeleton of the titan which was good enough as it was able to fend off the barrage of cannons. Aaron was even more drained than and drained here than in canon though. Seeing just the skeleton of the titan was enough to frighten the audience of soldiers as it was even larger than what the rumors told. The titan began to evaporate as soon as Aaron forced his way out of it. He went to see Mikasa and Armin's conditions while War Warman was left disturbed at the sight. He wanted to just wipe the three off the face of the earth at this point as he couldn't trust any of the three, especially Aaron, but Armin forced them to all listen to him for a second. He wasn't willing to just have everyone try to kill his friend without even getting a chance, a chance to see from their perspective. He was also convinced by Aaron to argue for his case if he could convince the garrison to cease fire. Aaron wouldn't have to run away. Aaron was placing his faith in Armin, which confused him at first. He didn't understand why he was putting so much on his shoulders, but Aaron explained that he trusted his judgment. If it went for his decision to get Hans back there at Wal Maria, he and Mikasa would have probably been dead. Armin spoke his heart out at that moment. He commented on how Aaron could be seen as a valuable military asset. After all, War Warman mentioned there being several witnesses, so surely those same witnesses must have seen Aaron fighting off the other titans and even wiping out a good majority in a large blast. He was something unseen before, even for a titan, so it would be a waste to just kill off Aaron. What War This man and his name, I hate it. Warman was unmoved though. 
His fear was clouding his judgment. He signaled for the soldiers to fire once again at the at the trio. But before he could complete the action, a hand grabbed him by the arm. I think that's good enough. He looked to see who this was that interrupted his his action, only to have his eyes widen as it was com Commander Dot Pixis giving him an order to stand down. Your fear seems to have your your fear seems to be causing you to make irrational decisions. You won't even listen to what the boy has to say. Good grief. <sighs> I mean, was it? Tell me. Those words you spoke back there. Did you truly mean what you said or did you just say them as a way to hopefully survive? Pixis questioned. It, it was a mix of both. I truly do believe Aaron can become an asset and one of the ways he could do so would be through carrying that boulder in town and bringing it over to the gate in order to seal the breach. By doing this we would be able to effectively stop the other titans from making these advances. It may not seem that much at first, but I believe that this could be the start of a new era where we could change the tides of battle. Give us humans a fighting chance, Armin spoke. Pixis hummed in contemplation before making his way over to Aaron. If that's the case, I'd like to know your say on this, Aaron Jaeger. Do you agree to these terms? Aaron was silent for a moment, trying to find the right words to say. I can't promise you that I'll be in complete control of this transformation of minds in order to commit to such tasks yet. I don't quite understand the form either. There's a chance I may lose control. Hmm. Well, allow me to rephrase the question then. Are you at least willing to attempt? to accomplish such a task. Aaron didn't hesitate to answer this question here. Of course, I'll try my absolute best for this mission and any others in the future. I'll put my life on the line if it means that we'll have a, fi uh, we'll have a fighting chance. Aaron cried out. Pixis smirked. I like your spike, kid. Let's go. Aaron found himself following Pixis up the wall. Hearing this man's speech amazed the boy. The pure passion in his voice was able to draw the masses. He didn't think so many soldiers would be willing to stay after hearing about the conditions of their mission. It did seem like a long shot, but the older gent knew how to appeal to the military members' emotions. There were those who wanted to leave, but his words made them decide to stay. Pixis ordered for a couple of the soldiers to guard Aaron during this mission. He wanted to make sure no titan titans got close to him while he was in the process of lifting the boulder. Mercosa wanted to be part of this group to watch over Aaron but the boy refused her offer before the group left to find the shortest route with no titans around. Aaron stopped to look over at Armin. Oi, don't die on me now, Armin. Armin had been apologizing profusely to Aaron for putting so much weight on his shoulders, despite Aaron telling him that it was fine, that it was a far better situation than the one they were in before. This little jab caused Armin to look up at, at Aaron, who was smiling at him before he turned his back to follow the rest of his group. Armin realized he needed to man up now, considering where they were at now. They weren't little kids anymore. Same to you, Aaron. Don't die on me. Armin hollered. Yeah, right. <laughs> Once Aaron's group made it to the boulder, Aaron's, Aaron leaped off the wall and bit his thumb hard enough to make it bleed. 
as soon as he did this a bolt of lightning struck the area and Aaron's place was now it looked like a dinosaur from the days of old this monstrous beast that looked so different from other titans it put even the colossal titan to shame in the fear factor to know Aaron was the one in control of this worm left many in awe this was no mere titan this you could say was a king of titans no 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 but yet the king of kaiju godzilla everyone was there to witness his mighty roar and see him lift the boulder there was something off though he seemed a bit shorter though last time it was mentioned that Aaron's titan form stood at around 70 meters but it was only 65 meters here why'd he shrink it didn't matter too much though because he was still larger than even the colossal titan several meters taller than the wall itself actually Aaron was struggling to stay in control here although no one outside of himself knew this fact he was exhausted from using this form and he couldn't maintain it for long the form boosted his intelligence and regeneration capabilities but the pure size of the titan was what was causing him to be in intense concentration he couldn't afford to screw up here especially with so many counting on him the intelligence he was given thanks to the unique titan tran transformation was probably the only thing here keeping him fr from losing control and wreaking havoc. Each step he took felt like he was taking a test of the sorts, as if he was learning how to walk all over again. He was holding the boulder close to his chest here, since he didn't have the same sort of titan build here. His arms simply weren't long enough to lift the boulder above his head he was still effective in bringing the boulder over to plug up the breach Aaron ended up taking a knee right after though out of exhaustion he'd used the transformation three times already in a day without much rest at all he saw the silhouette rushing towards him that and the yellow signal flare which was meant to signify that the mission was accomplished once he got a better look at the silhouette, he could make out the figure of Mikasa. But there was one problem. Two, titan two titans were also rushing towards him, probably thinking they could devour him like any other piece of prey. Well, he wasn't about to have that happen here. He forced himself to lift his gargantuan head and release the last of his energy in one massive attack. He would dubbed this the atomic breath his spines began to glow that all too familiar blue he roared one more time one more mighty roar before releasing this devastating power of his it was a bit different though due to his weakened state and that difference being that when it was when it was released it was less of a blue beam of energy rather it resembled blue flames with a layer of steam oozing off of it sort of like a bonfire the strength of the blast hardly weakened though as it was able to easily obliterate the titans that dared to try and approach him it didn't, it didn't just stop at those titans either. He turned his head and directed, directed it at any other titans within the vicinity at the time, quite easily eliminating them in the process. Once he was done, he collapsed completely. Me constantly made a way to Aaron and cut the nape of his titan form, even with a dorsal plate in the way here. What she was concerned about here was whether or not Aaron was okay. She managed to lift him out uh she managed to lift him out with the help of Rico. 
one of the people in Aaron's protection squadron and Levi, he was burning up and only semi-conscious. He could hear Mikasa screaming at him to wake up and run away from the light while Rico was crying. The reason why was because of the fact she now had something to believe in, but Aaron unfortunately didn't know that at the time. Someone that caught his attention though was Levi. He remembered him from when they were, well, from when he tried to pull a fast one on him. He was said to be the best of the best when it came onto the scout regiment. He, he saw the rest of the scout regiment also taking down titans he was unable to catch and his atomic breath. They evacuated Aaron out of the area as he had served his purpose here and he wasn't functional for battle any longer. He saw how efficient they were able to cut down those titans too. He blacked out a couple minutes later. The next time he woke up though he was in a jail cell with his arms and legs chained up. He was confused as to what was going on until Levi stepped out of the shadow. Where, where am I? Aaron asked. Aaron, you were in the custody. You were in the custody of the military police. Aaron's eyes widened. He was at a complete loss for words. While this was happening though, Annie, Bertolt, and Rainer were Taking a bit of a walk together discussing plans, well, more specifically discussing what to do with Jaeger. He is in the possession of a titan taller than even my colossal titan. Please, tell me, how do we compete with that? Bertolt questioned. This is also a titan we've never seen before. It doesn't fit the description of any of the titan shifters unless it's possibly the beast titan but that doesn't explain the that weird mouth cannon ability of his and he pointed out Rainer was taking everything into consideration he didn't know what to do here but at the same time he couldn't risk abandoning the mission there would be grave consequences if they did he opened his mouth to say something, but that's where Titan sign will be leaving it off for now. Yes, I know how terrible, and you should um you should suffer because of that. I really don't care. Also, I'm going to explain something real quick that I'm not sure if Izukage probably mentioned in his video, but when it comes down to um. Aaron's Titan forms height, as you already know, like Godzilla is probably like around 300 meters tall. Um, yeah, that's not gonna work here. I mean, like, wall, like, um, the walls are like only 50 meters tall. Um, just being able to like go up to like 70 meters alone is like giving him a lot. <laughs> like, he's already way taller than um the colossal titan so yeah and another, another thing as well though i should mention is when it comes on to when it comes on to like how it works here basically when it comes on to how things work here what happens is that well aaron won't be able to stay in that form for too long i've um, this has already been said by Izukage, but I'm going to also like leave a picture up for you guys to see how things would look if we were to have actually kept his kept Godzilla's height the same here for Aaron being able to become Godzilla. And you guys can leave your comments down below mentioning how like yeah you should have kept it at 300 meters just for Aaron to like um destroy everybody <laughs> even though he's probably going to be able to do that here anyways 
Yeah. 